Rita Anderson is an absolutely phenomenal person. I know you all know that already. But she has, from the beginning, I remember our first meeting together on the prayer committee at the IHOP on I-20 and uh, Highway 18. She has brought so much to the tea party, and I am so pleased that she decided to step in and help our poor Laura, who is harangued with so many issues. Mm -hmm. She stepped in and told Laura she had a passion for education. She wanted to be the uh, lead person on Common Core. Laura breathed a great sigh of relief. They have been working together, and uh, Rita has put together this um, presentation that we will all see for the first time tonight. She has uh, plans to share it with a, a group uh, later on this month, and we would like to um, see if we could uh, coordinate with our legislature and have a, a luncheon for them and like you know, move the house that we did, have a move education and let Rita uh, and Laura share this information with them. So we're looking for positive change for our state as a result of what uh, Rita and Laura are doing with Common Core. And we thank Laura for being the leader on our issues and um, she has asked people and asked people to please help her. And I know Maureen has stepped in and is helping now. And I hope that others will help because Laura cannot do this by herself. And we cannot be a viable group of people in the know without knowing what the issues are. And the issues must be investigated to make sure that the information we're receiving is accurate. Laura spends tons of time doing just that. And before we send anything to Laura, we need to um, validate it and then send it to Laura and let her massage it and handle it to share it with the rest of us. But with no further ado, I want to say welcome to Rita. Thank you for all you do. Thank you in advance for this presentation. And we eagerly await viewing it. I had no idea until Janice told me a little while ago that she had plans to do this for the legislature. I put it together for home folks, for you guys, for the Concerned Women for America, Jackson, Mississippi chapter, and they'll get the presentation later this month. So, uh, that said, it makes me a little bit nervous, and then we're all here together, we're home folks. Mm -hmm. You've been seeing this adopted before it was read. That's exactly right. How many times have we seen things that have been foisted upon us that we commit to before we even know what we're committed to? But that's what happened. Uh, untested, but now it's being exposed across the nation. Uh, what is Common Core? How many of you really know a lot about it and think you're well informed? Raise your hand. Okay, I did not know until Laura said, you know, I'm really concerned about this, but I have no time for research right now. The session going on, I need help. I thought this was going to be simple. Mm -hmm. And it was in that there is a lot of information out there about it. The hard part is there's so many elements to Common Core. There's so many pieces and moving parts and it's changing every day. So there's a lot to tell you, and, and uh, I really need to go fast, so listen fast. I'm going to try to go fast. Um, I, because there's so much to it, as I got in the research, I realized I've got to start documenting things. I've got to break this down into segments. And I did, and I ended up with a 20-plus page white paper that uh, has been put on the Mississippi Tea Party website. There's a link to the PDF if you want to go there and read it. Uh, it was put up there in March, but there's still a lot that has happened since March. I will tell you that I am not a teacher, never had a passion to teach. My education had nothing to do with teaching, and my children are out of school. But when I took this on, I realized why I need to be concerned about it, and you need to be concerned about it. And it really is summed up by what President Abraham Lincoln famously said. The philosophy of the classroom of one generation will be the philosophy of the government of the next generation. And that's what we're living with right now. We're a little behind, 
but we got to get on the, on the ball and do something about it. I will tell you that I found, as I said, a lot out there. I tried to drive myself to the sources that I felt would be most credible when people looked at the white paper. A lot, Glenn Beck has been all over this. So has Michelle Malkin. And if you follow them, you've heard a lot about it, and they have a lot of good information. But I purposely did not cite either one of them because they're controversial. And I, I really want us to, to focus on those uh, policy think tanks and those organizations that are not controversial, but they're knowledgeable. They know these things. So that's exactly what I did. Okay. What well, Common Core is simply a term that refers to another educational reform program. Common Core state standards is the first step in it. It is a set of K through 12 educational standards, English language arts, and mathematics. Those were the first standards rolled out when Common Core was launched. The uh, Common Core proponents say that it's to prepare students to compete globally and allow for performance comparisons among states. Well, who's behind Common Core? Achieve Incorporated is an entity that was established in 1996 by the National Governors Association. It's governed by six governors and six corporate leaders, and their job is to publish and promote the national standards. <clears throat> they have received millions in funds from these sources, the Gates Foundations and GE and Microsoft and at and <clears throat> But who's really behind it? It is clear when you research it and read and follow it for the three, four, or five months that I've been doing this, that it's another step in the long battle for the federal government to take over the educational system in America. And it's got social reform written all over it. Surprise, surprise. We know that federal meddling in uh, state curriculum is unconstitutional, but they are meddling. The Department of Education, the, the U.S. Department of Education, does push Common Core through their Race to the Top waivers and the No Child Left Behind waiver, uh, waivers, the grants and waivers. Race to the Top is an educational funding program that, that got $4.35 billion in the Obama stimulus plan. Well, people, and I had people tell me this when I started talking about Common Core. I had a, a flip, an elected politician in Clinton say, but it's, it's state-led, you know, it's the governors voted on it. <clears throat> well, that was important for it to look like it was state-led. Because we all remember, there have been plenty of efforts for the federal government to take over education, and they have... Some failed miserably, like in 1995 when the Senate voted down a bill that was going to federalize the teaching of history. It was a 99 to 1, so they learned that lesson. It has to look like it's a state initiative, don't, no federal. And don't make a lot of fanfare. Go about it very quietly. That's why, even though it was launched in 2008, it's just now getting a lot of publicity and a lot of talk because they went about it very quietly so nobody would notice. And they needed to start with the less controversial subjects since history was such a hot button before. They created this facade by the National Governors Association. They said it's their program, they own it, they launched it, they were recruited. Um, and they're really a DC-based trade group. They're not an official body of the states. They get half of their funding from the federal government and the other half from state membership dues. And uh, the Heartland Institute has said that they have tried to find where there was a resolution or something where governors voted to do this. So far, uh, the NGA has not released anything, any text of a resolution that says they've officially passed it. The other entity that gives them that state-led look is the Council of Chief State School Officers, and then, of course, Achieve Incorporated, which was founded by the National Governors Association. It unfolded in 2008 to 2010. The Gates Foundation has provided millions to these two entities to develop the system. $4.35 billion in the stimulus earmarked to the Education Department for a race to the top grants. That was the carrot to states to get them to sign up. Mm -hmm. And then John Boehner added another 700 million in new race to the top funds 
in 2011 when he did his budget compromise with Obama. So what did the states do? Well, as I said, race to the top was rolled out. The grants were the carrot, and also the other carrot was schools wanted to get out and no child left behind. Everybody wanted waivers, and the federal government said, you get a better chance of getting your waiver if you apply for a race to the top grant. But you have to commit to adopt the common core standards. That was a requirement. Now here's, their timing was so important. Race to the top applications were due January 2010. November to January, everybody's up watching the holidays. There's no legislatures in session. That's a really good time to slip it in. Um, and they hadn't released the standards yet. They didn't release them until March. They released a draft. And then in June, they released the final standards. Um, so governors signed up to get those federal grants because it was rough on states at the time. They were cash strapped and they needed education money. This was all very strategic. There was a second wave of applications that summer, um, and those were due August of 2010. Your final commitment was required. Again, summer months. No legislatures in session. What did the states do? Uh, 42 states committed initially. Alaska, Nebraska, Minnesota, Virginia, Texas said no. Haley Barber recommended the standards for Mississippi in 09. And then Superintendent Tom Burnham officially adopted them in June of 2010. <coughs> uh, this kind of shows you as of May, right, this month, where it all stands with the states. The ones that are in gray, let me start with the red. The states that are in red are working to reject Common Core for their states. The ones that are in blue rejected them outright to start with. Uh, the ones that are in gray, they're waiting for reality to set in. <coughs> and that's where Mississippi is. We're waiting for reality to set in. <coughs> There are a few things that have happened even since that map was published that, that are important. Uh, just a couple of, a week or so ago, Indiana Governor Mike Pence put a time out on Common Core. And uh, there was a bill that would call for public hearings, legislative review, and a cost analysis. Something that had not been done. I mean, they adopted it before they knew what they were getting into. Mm. So that's a very positive step, and that was done just in the last week or so. The Texas House, and I, like I said, Texas never adopted it to start with, but they, they still voted 140 to 2 to pass language that would prohibit Texas from participating in Common Core. And then on the 13th, the Missouri legislature held a hearing on uh, a bill that's similar to Indiana's and I just read today that it was voted unanimously out of their education committee. There's some other positive things that have happened. The Republican National Committee at its spring meeting adopted a resolution concerning Common Core standards, rejecting the plan. That's good. In fact, I have copies up there if you want to pick one up. I have read, though, and this is not surprising, there was a lot of public pressure to get them to do that. Uh, then in April, there were a group of senators who uh, wrote a letter to the Senate Education Subcommittee urging them to defund Common Core, <coughs> get the Department of Education out of curricula in states. And then on April 30th, uh, 36 senators wrote Arnie Duncan, the Federal uh, Secretary of Education, regarding their concerns over Common Core, especially privacy issues, and they requested detailed changes that had been made to federal policy regarding student privacy. There is a copy of that letter up there as well. And uh, our, none of our representatives or senators, by the way, signed off on any of those. I need to speed it up. It's just standards, isn't it? Well, you have to adopt 100% of the standards. You cannot change them. You cannot delete them. You can add 15% of content, but that's all. There were validation committees signing off of the late, the uh, Dr. Stotsky was on the uh, English Language Arts Validation Committee. She would not sign off on it. 
She said they're poor quality, empty skill sets, de-emphasizing literature, low rating levels. Dr. James Milgram, math professor at Stanford University, would not sign off on the math standards. He said it's almost a joke to think that students in Common Core will be ready for math at the university. There's several things that Truth in American Education cited as weaknesses in math and weaknesses in English language arts, and you can see those on their rep website. The science standards were slated to be uh, released in the spring, and uh, I called our State Department of Education because John Moore had told me that no, they had not been released. And so I called the Education Department and they said, they're not going to be in the Common Core Science Standards. We're not going to adopt them because they're not going to be in. And uh, I said, okay. He said, but there is going to be some new standards called next generation. Now, I'm not clear, and he may not have addressed this, about whether our state will adopt those standards. But I went on the website, on the internet, and it's pretty clear. CommonCoreSciences.com is where you find all the information about next generation. And it clearly says Common Core Standards. It's just a different name. Well, you see, it integrates life, physical, and earth sciences with engineering and technology, science, engineering, and technology, can influence society in the natural <coughs> world. You know, I read global warming, Agenda 21, all those wonderful things. You know, we, we would never build a keystone pipeline with this kind of education. And there are a number of players in common form. At the bottom, Across the bottom is the Gates Foundation. I'm sorry, it's not in good focus. Um, the Department of Education at the top, and in the middle are a number of entities. I think they created this mass just so it would be really hard to follow and confusing. But let me just say, the Gates Foundation is shooting a lot of money mm -hmm. to these entities, to Common Core, to those committees that were formed to develop it and promote it. The National Center for Education and Economy uh, moved to do the committees to staff Common Core. The key players are four people. Mark Tucker, president of the National Center for Education and Economy and an old lady of Hillary Clinton's. Sally Hampton, uh, Phil Darrow. David Coleman is the lead architect. He's the scariest one of all. None of these four people have ever taught a day in their life in a K-12 classroom. Zero. Mark Tucker is really scared. Um, he was educated in Massachusetts. He went to Brown, Yale, George Washington. He studied philosophy, American literature, theater engineering, technical production, telecommunication policy. And despite all of that and the fact that he's not a teacher, he's considered an expert on education reform, benchmarking policies, and practices for education. He did teach two semesters in college, but we need to be concerned about it. Uh, you may remember, a lot of us are old enough to remember, he's famous for his Dear Hillary letter. When Bill Clinton got elected the first time, he wrote the Arkansas First Lady Hillary Clinton to lay out a master plan for the Clinton administration to take over the entire U.S. education system so that he can serve national economic planning of the workforce remold the system into a seamless web that literally extends from cradle to grave and is the same system for everyone. This 18-page uh, letter was posted on the congressional record in 1998 by Representative Bob Schaefer, if you want to go find it and read it. But this guy's the scariest one of all. Rhodes Scholar, advanced degrees in literature, classical literature. After he completed his education, he was turned down for a teaching job in New York. So he went on to work as an education consultant. Never taught anywhere. I'm sure he's a brilliant man, but he is a social reformer, and he is not an educator. He was named, though, in 2011 by Time Magazine as one of the most influential people in education. And last year, this is the scary part, he was named president of the college board. That is the entity that develops the SAT tests, so, you know, he wrote Common Core Standards. I read somewhere that, you know, he spent two years and got millions of dollars from the Gates Foundation to do that. So he's working from K up, and now he's working from college down. Um, uh, 
the New York Times did an article when he was named president of the college board and quoted several things that he had to say. We have a crisis in education over the next few years. The main thing on the college board's agenda is to deliver its social mission. College board's not just about measuring the testing, but designing high quality curriculum. Robert Scott, the Texas Commissioner of Education, said they're not adopting the standards. He thinks highly of Mr. Coleman. He shares his educational goals, but no desire for national standards. There's no reason on earth for common core standards in these tests that we're wasting millions of dollars on, said Stephen Krashen, an emeritus education professor at the University of Southern California. The problem is poverty, poverty, poverty. Middle class children who go to well-funded schools do very well, but even the best tests, the most inspiring teachers, won't mean anything if the kids don't have enough teeth. We've all seen enough true stories about teachers who are successful in classrooms simply because they minister the students' needs. It's their social environment that is really important for them. Anyway, social reformer. <coughs> Are they qualified? <coughs> Mr. Sidemer, who was the 2007 Teacher of the Year in California, says they have zero K-12 teaching experience. Should we really be learning how to cook from someone who's never been in the kitchen? Mm. I'm going fast and skipping over a lot of things. The next thing goes assessments. The goal of the Common Core assessments is to develop new standardized tests aligned with Common Core. Test grades three through high school every year feedback to teachers and measure annual student growth. States participate in one of two testing consortia. Partnership for Assessment for Readiness for College and Careers is the one that Mississippi is involved in. The assessments start in the 2014-15 school year. They're designed to align to Common Core standards, so teachers are going to end up teaching to a test. Computerized states must acquire and maintain the technology to do these tests. The Department of Education has some funds for this, but if this is ongoing, you know, where is the money going to come from after that? Um, those are the two consortium, as I said, that for testing. And the tests need to align to the standards. Um, One teacher's observation. Here's the thing I don't get, and here's why I really think this should look. You don't need a whole bunch of educational data in a big database to teach a kid how to set goals. Government doesn't need to retain all the data in a database to help a child set goals and fulfill them. So not only are our kids going to feel like animals in a cage with this new one-size-fits-all mm -hmm. curriculum, they're going to be finely measured like lab rats. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to sign my kids up. But here's the big gorilla, and it's the data mining. The Department of Education proposes changes to their to federal regulations issued under Family Education Rights and Privacy Act to protect, and that act protects the privacy of this information on our children and our families. Uh, but they're changing it by executive order, not by legislative action, and that's what one of these letters uh, from the senators deals with. They're very concerned about that. They want to expand the definition of authorized representatives so they can share this data with the students. They want to redefine what an education program is to expand the reach of bureaucrats and broaden the access to, to this information. The key points, it weakens the student privacy protection. And it evades Congress by pushing a radical policy that changes congressional regulations by executive order rather than legislation. And there are, as I said, acts already in place that protect these things. The Pupil Protection Rights Act protects things like our religious beliefs, our political beliefs, our social, <coughs> sexual behavior and attitudes. They want to gather that information. Anyway, <clears throat> so that's the big alert, that our privacy is at risk, and that's where we really need, need to watch out. Uh, we don't, what will it cost? Well, it's going to cost millions of dollars for professional development for our teachers. I, they say it's not about curriculum, but when you say, here are the standards and here are the <coughs> assessments and back the standards, if you don't perform on the assessments and the initial data 
Indiana and Kentucky have both done some beta testing on the assessments, and their results, I understand, have not been good. So if you don't have good results, what's going to happen? You're going to start looking for curriculum that matches the standards in the assessments. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's a false argument. And these numbers come uh, with the Pioneer Institute source. Uh, I'm going to skip over that one in the interest of time. So it's not just about standards, it's about social <coughs> justice. And uh, it's about redistributing suburban education funds to less well-off urban schools. Private schools and home schools are also vulnerable. If they accept any federal funds, they're immediately um, vulnerable. And when you think about it, if these standardized tests align to Common Core and they're teaching toward it, then families of homeschoolers, those children have to compete for college entrance and for scholarships on the same level that the Common Core educated students do. So they may be forced just in the interest of, of level playing field to go to that. Um, what can we do? We can educate ourselves and educate other people. We need to have some oversight of our local administrators and school boards, contact our legislators, contact our congressmen. I would tell you that you need to be watching. I, I don't know how many times I've probably never been to the State Department of Education website. If I have, not nearly as much as I have in the last few months. That's really where you're going to find out what's going on in the State Department. But they have to post these public notices of the meetings. <coughs> there's one up there now saying that there's some revisions for early learning standards for three and four year olds that are pending and they're looking for public input. You will find who to contact and what the deadline is. So parents and teachers who are concerned about early childhood education need to need to respond. I recommend these resources because they're very uh, strong, they're very credible, they're very knowledgeable, and uh, if, there are lots of them out there, but if, if you want to follow uh, Common Core on the internet, these are your best resources. Um, I did a little flyer that will help you to know, and this is it. What we're going to be doing in the Central Mississippi Tea Party is continuing to call attention to Common Core. The reason that anything is happening in Indiana or Missouri or any other state of those red states is because of the grassroots efforts of tea parties and teachers and parents. And that's what we need to do. Why there's a backlash against Common Core? And I just printed this today. It was just uh, recently published. It's by Lindsey Burke, who is a Will Skillman Fellow in Education Policy at the Heritage Foundation. Let me give you a few excerpts why there's a backlash against Common Core. Federal government has spent billions to move Common Core forward. It's put billions of more on the line. Unfortunately, parents, teachers, Tea Party activists, governors, have every reason to believe Common Core represents major, unprecedented federal intervention into education. For an undertaking that claims to be largely free of federal involvement, Common Core has quite a few federal fingerprints on it. Concerns about nationalizing the content taught in every public school in America aren't limited to Tea Party activists, nor should the concerns of the Tea Party be dismissed. They express the understandable fear of many moms and dads and teachers and federal governments on the brink of dictating the content taught in every school. Their sentiments mirror the concerns of governors who proposed Common Core national standards from the beginning. Governor Bob McDonnell of Virginia says, I don't want to have a federal bureaucracy monitoring whether or not we're having the right programs in our schools. The bottom line is we don't need the federal government with Common Core telling us how to run schools in Virginia. We use our own system, which is very good. It's empirically tested. Governor Rick Perry of Texas, who never wins his words, says, the academic standards of Texas are not for sale. Um, and I, there's other, I will tell you that um, Sandra Stotsky and James Milgram, who did not sign off on these standards, have continued to speak across the nation against the Common Core standards. Um, those who are closest to the child 
not national organizations or bureaucrats in Washington are best equipped to improve educational outcomes. Decisions about standards and assessments should be made at the state level, better still at the local level, for parents, teachers, and business leaders who understand the skills that the students need for success can provide real input. Thankfully, it's not too late to reverse course. Efforts in the 1990s to nationalize curriculum were ultimately rejected by governors. States and local districts understood that Washington was overstepping. It's time to stand up for educational freedom and reject this latest and perhaps greatest overreach. So I thought, was glad to have run across that. I thought it was a fitting conclusion to the talk. But I'm sorry I didn't get to fill in a lot of things. But that flyer, as I said, kind of gives you an outline of what we're planning on doing. We're working on a website that will help people have a voice. We want parents, we want uh, homeschoolers, we want teachers who are concerned to be able to go there and post their concerns and their comments. We want to keep people updated on what's going on. And the Common Core is not the only educational issue that the Tea Party is concerned about. So when you see the name of, the, of this initiative and it's not called Common Core, that's because there's some other things that we need to be concerned about, which is the reason that we're going to Washington, because we need to be concerned about the Islamic influence in our curriculum as well. It's already proliferated the, the school curriculum across the state and across the nation. So that'll be another issue uh, regarding education that we'll have to take up. And that's why we're called Act for Education. That's exactly right. Before we take questions, Arnold, would you turn on the lights? Put the lights on. Are there any questions uh, that anyone wants to address with Rita? Mm -hmm. Robert? Yeah. Jan, it's an excellent presentation. Uh, yes. I quickly looked over, scanned over some of your documents there, and I saw a letter signed by a number of congressmen, representatives, House of Representatives, and I noticed in your slide it said 36 senators. It, are there two different letters? The, the there are. The only point I'm making is if you're going to give this presentation to others, if you say senators, you really mean representatives. Yeah, I really mean representatives. Thank you, Robert. It okay. sure is. Excellent presentation. Uh, because I, I think the other letter, which I did not have copies of, it was written to uh, It was written to an education committee in the Senate. Yeah. So I didn't make copies of it. Um, but I thought that one was, was is more recent and it's got more signatures to it and it's particularly specific. I, I will tell you that um, the issues that they brought up of concern, the privacy issues especially, are the ones that, as Laura and I have talked with uh, policymakers in Mississippi, they have advised us that those are really the ones you need to have at home. <clears throat> in Mississippi, Common Core has been adopted by the superintendent at the time. And our Department of Education is established by a constitutional mandate. A lot of states don't have that. Their boards of education were established by legislative action. So that, you know, that kind of takes the legislature out of, out of the flow chart a little bit in Mississippi. Um, so, you know, to, to get them to reverse it, I'll just tell you, I don't have any axe to grind with our Department of Education or our legislators, any of those guys. They are wonderful, but they have drunk the food labels.